His guards are playing. Who isn't supposed to uh, all of a sudden gets hot. And uh, we've shown where we're capable of playing with everybody. We just haven't been able to get over the hump in a lot of these games. Yeah. <clears throat> and so you never know what can happen come the postseason. And and uh, it's important to try to get that first playoff game at home. And so being that we beat Dodge out there, if we can beat them on uh, Saturday, that gives us the first tiebreaker if we would end up tied. And right now they're like a half a game ahead of us. And we're sitting on the outside right now. We're in ninth. Um, Dodge City, I think, is eighth. And then Northwest Tech is seventh. And so uh, the top, uh, well, the top four teams, they get buys. And then the next four teams get first-round playoff games at home against the bottom four, next four teams. And uh, so that's what we're striving for. And I tell you, the other team that uh, we're, we're hoping we can catch is Northwest Tech, but they are really playing well. Um, they beat Garden City a week ago. They... Uh, they took Hutch to the wire last night. They were beating Hutch in the last minute of the game, and Hutch made a couple plays at the end uh, to be able to win a close one. They're really playing well. Yeah, you're, so you're absolutely we're, right. we're uh, you know the big the biggest thing is trying to move up at least the one spot. And this game on Saturday is going to be big for us. Yes, it is. And you're right about Northwest Tech. It's a team that really. Uh uh, I, I, it kind of caught me off guard a couple days ago, too, where I was taking a look at the standings before the, the matchup with Garden City, and I was like, man, they jumped into the top 6-7 out of nowhere, uh, and uh, they are playing some really good basketball, some good athletes that have started hitting some shots in the yeah. second half of the season, and uh, a great defensive team as well. So uh, this is obviously a huge game, and you look at this matchup, and something that really stands out to me, your team won the rebound battle 37-28, to uh, but a big reason for that, 15 rebounds for Alvin Cole, probably his best game rebounding the ball all year long, and whether it's Alvin, whether it's Charles coming off of the big game against Garden, obviously having those two forwards down low, huge, huge X factor in this game is going to be them winning the battle on the glass. Yeah, and the other forward that's not with us, Bubakar, Keita, he had a good game. Um, I think he had uh, 10 points, and uh, he, he rebounded the ball pretty good that game. Um, so, yeah, uh, we're hoping uh, we, we, Al gets back into that rebound mode like he was earlier. Uh, he had some stretches. He played uh, well against Garden City the first time and, and didn't play as well yesterday, And but Charles did. So um, we're anticipating also having Chris back. Um, I saw him today. He came over this afternoon when we got back, and uh, I talked to him, and the nurse didn't want him to practice today, but uh, she's gave him the green light to practice tomorrow. So uh, we'll see how his conditioning is because, you know, the guys who have had that flu in the past, um, Charles and CJ, when they had that, and, uh, boy, it just takes it out of you. And, uh, you know, you can't just jump back in there and think that you're going to play 35 minutes because uh, you're going to get exhausted out there. So... We'll see how he is tomorrow in practice and working back in there, but it's going to be nice having him back uh, with us on Saturday. Coach, uh, another thing that really uh, I've started focusing on here in the second half of the season is assist-to-turnover ratios. Obviously, the best teams in the league distribute the ball well. The best teams in the league limit their turnovers, right. uh, and that's a number I've just been really keeping my eyes on. And in this first matchup with Dodge, uh, only 10 turnovers by the Conquistadors. It's not a terrible number uh, in this league, but only 11 team assists, and I think that's another uh, key for your team is the defense played well for stretches this year. There's been some off nights, but I think for the most part this year it's been a good defense, uh, and obviously if you can keep that assist and turnover number as close to one-to-one -one as possible, that puts your defense in a good spot. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we emphasize that so much in practice about taking care of the ball and getting shots and you know, earlier in the year with such a young team, they didn't understand the importance of it. And as we've gone along, uh, that's one thing that we are getting better at, just taking care of it. And also now they, they understand the offense a little bit better and where people are going to be and what, what got other guys are going to be doing. So, uh, But, yeah, that is such a big factor in, in ball games. Uh, second chance points and turnovers, stats that a lot of people don't look at. Uh, you know, when they look at the final score. But uh, if you look at a stat sheet, those two things there uh, are big indicators of who's winning and who's losing. Coach, final thing I have for you. Appreciate your time, as always. Both of these teams got to the free throw line quite a bit in this first matchup with Dodge City. Ended up 24 free throws. Your team had 18. Both teams shot the ball pretty well at the line as well. 78% for you, 75% for Dodge. 
Uh, a team that's really shot the free throw, uh, the free throw shots well all season long, but obviously trying to keep uh, some of your key players out of foul trouble, like Charles, like CJ, like uh, like Chris, like Janai. Uh, how do you take advantage of getting back to the line uh, against them like you did in the first matchup, but maybe also trying to cut back some of your personal fouls a little bit as well? Yeah, just uh, running good offense, uh, trying to attack inside. Uh, we don't do that as much as, as I would like. Um, you know, we keep emphasizing that because that it's hard to guard in a post, and and uh, you know you get opportunities to go to the free throw line when you throw it in there. Uh, you draw more fouls down in that area, so uh, we we you know we continue to emphasize that. But uh, and on the other end of the floor, man, every day we we're talking about guarding without fouling. And last night, um, you know, I think Garden City might have only shot two free throws in the game last night. Uh, they didn't shoot many. Um, but, I mean, we were zoned up, but still in a zone you can still foul. But uh, the guys were doing a good job of moving their feet and, and not taking dumb chances trying to make steals and things or fouling shooters. And uh, so we limited them to the uh, uh, very low total on their free throw shooting. Yeah, you did. And I, I just checked that for you. One out of two in both. Yeah. It looks like both were on and ones because it was two players. It was one of one and Getting ready for game two of Coffeeville and Dodge City this Saturday afternoon. I'm Shane Also Happy you're with us here on US 98 and the Red Raven Sports Network. Let's get you starting lineups for both teams first. For the visiting Conquistadors, starting at guard, a six-foot sophomore, numbers one, Ice Emery. Starting at guard, a six-five sophomore, number four, Avnur Bular. Starting at guard, a six-two freshman, number 11, Hunter Duncan. Starting at guard, a 6'6", freshman, number 12, Jackson Swartz. And starting at forward, a 6'9", freshman, number 24, Tyler Williams. For the Ravens, it is a 6'1", freshman out of San Marcos, Texas, number one, Javen Kofer. A 5'10", freshman out of Owensboro, Kentucky, number two, Brian Griffith. A 6'6", freshman out of Evansville, Indiana, Number four, Janai Summers. A 6'7 freshman from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Number five, C.J. Smith. And rounding out the starting five for the Ravens, a 6'6 sophomore from Tallahassee, Florida. Number 15, Chris Carroll. One more time for both teams for the uh, Conquistadors. It's number one, Ice Emery. Number four, Avnur Bular. Number 11, Hunter Duncan. Number 12, Jackson Swartz. And number 24, Tyler Williams. For the Ravens, it's number one, Javen Kofer. Number two, Brian Griffith. Number four, Janai Summers. Number five, C.J. Smith. And number 15, Chris Carroll. Ravens won the first matchup between these two teams, 91-72. Let's see if they can complete the regular season sweep. In a massive game for playoff implications. Dodge in the purple jerseys with the gold trim. Ravens in the white with the red trim. And for those of you that, of course, listen to the Lady Raven game, wanting to know, Coach Tony Turner will join us at halftime here in game two. So stay tuned. Coach Turner will have his thoughts on game one's performance. He'll be joining us at the half. Our Red Raven halftime show presented by Community State Bank. Smith and Swartz will jump. Ravens and Conquistadors. It's, it's Dodge City off the tip. Dodge City basketball working right. This is Ice Emery handing it off, and now they try to work it down low to Tyler Williams. Williams spins, goes up, a little hook shot, and that's good. And Dodge City strikes first. Javen Kofer 
Kofer working right. It's a zone look for Don City. 2-0 Conquistadors early. Summers sends a three early in this one. That one well off. C.J. Smith pulls down the rebound. Had it poked, though, by Swartz. And the Ravens got the offensive rebound, but turn it over. 2-0 Dodge City early in this one. Big game for both teams. Ravens currently ninth in the conference. Dodge City in eighth. Of course, seeds five through eight get to host a playoff game in the first round. Bular hands it off. And that's Duncan. Step back jump shot is off. Rebound taken by C.J. He's got a pair of rebounds early in this one. Here's Brian Griffith. Nice crossover move. Brian attacks, goes up all the way. Had it blocked and a late foul call. Foul will go against number 11, Hunter Duncan, the freshman out of Chicago. And Brian Griffith will go to the free throw line after drawing the contact. First free throw for Brian. Gets the bounce. Of course, a key player that we saw in game one of this doubleheader that is not available today for Dodge. Number three, Gavin Shannon. He averaged about 15 points a game first half of the season. He will not be playing here this afternoon, so they'll be expecting other players to step up around Ice Emery, who is the team's leading scorer. Two for two for Griffith, and we are knotted up just over a minute into this game. This is Hunter Duncan bringing it up. He's got an early foul. Hands it off to Ice Emery, who sends the three and missed it off the back of the iron. Battle for the rebound. Swartz comes up with it, goes up and lays it in. That's a Kansas kid right there. Swartz is out of Anthony, Kansas, and he gets the score to make it 4-2. Conquistadors. Brian Griffith has it. 4-2 Dodge City early in this one. CJ works to the corner. Might have gotten away with a travel, and he lost it down low. Wanted a foul call, didn't get it. Dodge City with the ball up by two early in this one. Hunter Duncan hands it off. Boulard sends it and missed it. So Dodge City's missed their first couple outside shots. Here comes Janai Summers off the rebound. Ravens down by two. Brian Griffith. Griffith and the Ravens still looking for their first field goal of the day. Both of their points have come via the free throw line. Here's Chris Carroll. Hands it off to Javen Kofer. Kofer works it left. Summers deep three. Janai nothing but net. Janai Summers. How good has he been in the last two months? And he gets it started with a three-point shot. Ice Emery has it now, hands it off. The spin move there by Tyler Williams. Carroll got a hand on it and took it away. Janai hands it off to CJ. CJ fouled on the attack. And free throws coming for CJ Smith. CJ has elevated his game, especially on the offensive end in the last six weeks. He's become an important piece of this team. He averages now about nine points a game. And they're going to ask him to step up, of course, around guys like Janai Summers, Chris Carroll, Brian Griffith, as the Ravens look to play their best basketball in the postseason. First one good for CJ. A good sign early in this one. Two for Griffith, three for Summers, and now CJ has converted on his first free throw. Second one on its way, and good. So two for Smith, two for Griffith, three for Summers. Three different Ravens have scored the first seven points. Boulard, trap comes here from the Ravens. Boulard in a whole lot of trouble, in a straight jacket, and threw it away. The perfectly set trap by the Raven defense. And they have the ball leading at 7-4. to four. And in this first three minutes, I know it's a one-score game, but you got to like how Coffeyville's looked on both sides of the ball early in this one. Brian Griffith to Javen Kofer. Kofer had 15 against Barton last weekend. Did not score against Garden City. Chris Carroll attacking. Carroll goes right at the freshman Williams, and a foul was called before the shot. Carroll draws contact against Tyler Williams, the freshman out of Cleveland, Ohio. That's the third foul already against the Conquistadors. Griffith will inbound it here to Summers. Summers guarded by Boulard. Griffith now, still a zone look for Dodge. 12 to shoot here for the Ravens. Boulard guarding Summers. C.J. now working against the freshman, Swartz. Freshman on freshman. C.J. Smith missed the shot. Chris Carroll kept it up. C.J. able to wrestle it. It's a jump ball, and it stays with Coffeyville. 
Chris Carroll got a fingertip on it and keeps the possession alive for the Ravens. Chris Carroll, of course, we heard from Coach Herkelman on the Red Raven Coaches Show, was dealing with the flu earlier this week. He is available today, but obviously might be on a, mid of, a bit of a minutes restriction after not practicing most of the week. There's Chris's attack, and he's blocked by Williams. Hunter Duncan behind the back pass to Bular. Now Ice Emery for the tie. It is short, and the rebound collected by the Ravens as Carroll poked it away from Williams. Almost four minutes into this one, 7-4. Cover the attack, hands off to Griffith. Brian working left, trying to go right at Ice Emery. Brian trying to get to the baseline. Loose ball, last touch by Dodge City. It will stay with Coffeyville, 16 on the shot clock. We've had a fast-paced game so far. Ravens lead it 7-4. Three for Janai, two for Griffith, two for C.J. Smith. Pass goes to Chris Carroll. Carroll's been great on the glass so far in this one, even though he hasn't scored. Throws that one up. No, C.J. there to clean it up. And Chris Carroll, almost a little bit of a pass there, knowing C.J. would have positioning on the other side of the rim. This is Hunter Duncan. Duncan works it right to Swartz. Swartz down low to Williams. That's a big mismatch going against Griffith, but he missed the shot. Rebound Smith, taps it to Janai. Janai had it poked, trying to run it back down, and that's taken away. Raven fans wanted a foul, didn't get it. Hunter Duncan goes at Summers, trying to find Boulard. Boulard is fouled, and that'll bring us to our first media timeout. Ravens off to a strong start. They lead it 9-4, 15-26 to go first half. We're back in 60 seconds on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. Comforting to know that the owner is providing the care. Owner Stephanie Bean with Medical Lodges is proud. Coffeeville. Skilled nursing services, rehabilitation, adult daycare, and much more are all offered. Visit medicallodges.com or stop by 2921 West 1st in Coffeeville and learn more. Medical Lodges Coffeeville, where they serve and enhance the lives of others with caring hands. This is Community State Bank at work. This is Community State Bank at work in our community. From kids' activities to school programs to funding home and business loans, every day Community State Bank is at work in our neighborhood. Whether you bank at Community State Bank or not, they're working for you every day. Community State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. I'm Mike Avey, and at Community State Bank, we believe in Coffeeville. This one, I'm Shane Neal. It's US 98 and the Red Raven Sports Network. So happy you're with us for this Saturday afternoon doubleheader. Lady Ravens came up a little bit short in game one. 70 to 57 was the final score in that game. And uh, this one, the Ravens off to a hot start. They forced some turnovers. They've looked good on the glass early in this one. And they've also converted on some trips to the free throw line. But now it is the sophomore, Avnur Boulard who's at the line for Dodge City. First one is up and bounces off. Bular out of Surrey, British Columbia in Canada, of course. And second one, got the bounce, so it's 9-5. Now we'll see a substitution as number two, Marius Cannery checks in. Kofer... Got it to Griffith. That was a dangerous pass. Brian got across half court. He does, and that's a foul against Canry. Canry, a freshman out of Lawrence, Massachusetts. Raven ball, they lead it by four. 15 10 to go, first half. This is Brian Griffith, guarded by Ice Emery. They work it now to Chris Carroll. Carroll hands it off to Janai Summers. Janai fakes, two to shoot, got to get it up, and they will not. Ravens not quite aware of the shot clock there and an empty possession. Dodge City basketball, they trail by four, 14.50 to go, first half. 
And now this is Hunter Duncan with the basketball. Hands it off to Tyler Williams, the freshman forward. They now work it to number 23, Tyree Jackson, another new addition for Dodge. The drive now by Canry, and it was deflected out of bounds, last touch by Coffeyville. So 12 on the shot clock here for the Conquistadors. Inbounds and an offensive foul. That'll go against Tyree Jackson, the freshman out of Blytheville, Arkansas. So a Dodge City mistake. They already have five fouls against him in the first five and a half minutes. Ravens have a four-point lead. Janai Summers pressured. Had it poked. Chris Carroll comes away with it. Carroll goes up, lays it in. Chris Carroll gets his first points. Of course, missed the Garden City game with an illness. Good to have Chris back out there for the Ravens. Hunter Duncan has it now, 11-5, Coffeyville. And that one was deflected. Ice Emery keeps it alive. And now uh, a three is off. Here's C.J. Smith. C.J. brings it up after the missed shot by Dodge City. And we're aware of some, uh, uh, some of our audio going in and out on our radio feed on US 98. We're trying to figure out what the issue is because uh, nothing is really different from our normal setup. So we're not really able to pinpoint an issue at this point. But we will try to get that addressed as soon as we can. And we appreciate your patience on the radio end if you're listening on US 98. Charles Caparasso will check in for Coffeyville. Chris Carroll heading to the free throw line after the foul against... Number 24, Tyler Williams. First free throw up and off by Carroll. And Charles comes in. He will. Charles coming off of maybe his best game of his career. He had 12 points, 12 rebounds. Went perfect at the free throw line. Only one foul committed, only one turnover. For the young center out of Florida. One out of two for Carroll. It's 12-5 Coffeyville. just over six minutes into this one. This is now Ice Emery. And they work it to Tyree Jackson. Jackson on the free throw line, hands it off. Now Emery. Emery still looking to get going offensively. That shot is off as well. Rebound Carroll as he almost boxed out Kofer there as well. Kofer brings it up. He's picked up by Jackson. Now Javen hands it off to Chris. Ravens by seven, looking to build an early lead. Janai Summers, big screen from Caparasso. And now Griffith. Griffith trying to get it down low to Charles, but good defense there by Sway. Swartz, excuse me, that is. Carroll the attack. Carroll is fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line. And Getting the worst of that there was Tyree Jackson. Jackson took a hit from Chris Carroll, and we joked when the Ravens played Cali that Jeff Nwankwo is a former Division I football player. Of course, started his career as a wide receiver at Tulane before deciding he wanted to play basketball. And uh, Chris Carroll also could pass as a football player. His 6'6", 230-pound frame, first free throw is good. Like we said, if you're just now joining us, uh, we know on our, uh, on our radio side of things we are kind of dealing with a little bit of some uh, issues in terms of staying connected, staying on the air. We're trying to get those fixed as soon as we possibly can. We do appreciate your patience. Uh, and uh, we, of course, are also available on the Red Raven Sports Network uh, where if you're uh, waiting for us to kind of resolve those issues, that's a good alternative for you here in this first half. Ravens up by nine. That pass gets to Jackson. And the drive, the layup, no good. Rebound, Caparasso able to pull it down for Coffeyville. Janai Summers working left. Summers the attack. Summers lays it in. It's an 11-point lead for the Ravens. And now this is Jamari Gamble. Gamble hands it off. The drive, the layup, no good, and a late foul call against Caparasso, and I'm not sure he agreed with that one. So free throws coming. We'll see Jeremiah Kemboy check in for Coffeyville. 
Kemboy, of course, the redshirt freshman. Out of El Dorado. 16 to seven after a pair of free throws for Dodge. Raven defense has been very good in this first half though. And now we have a 16 to seven game, 12.08 to go in this first half. Janai Summers has it now on the left wing. Summers working it right, this is Kemboy. Kemboy, the handoff to Janai, good look straight on three. Janai Summers! Knocks down his second triple of the first half. It's 19-7. Summers for three. He's got eight points for Coffeyville. And there's a turnover by Dodge. Media timeout, 11.43 to go. Let's step away for 90 seconds. We'll be right back. Ravens up by a dozen on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. honors program or an activity, have a voice with student government and be involved with student life events. Our school believes in our red and white traditions, providing you with a quality education and preparing you for the next journey in life. Once you experience our campus, you know you've made the right choice. Let us help you make our story your story and become Raven Proud. If you could use a little help around the house, Windsor Place at-home care is the perfect solution for you. Their caregivers are prepared to help you with laundry, meals, housekeeping, shopping, and more. These helpful services are so reasonably priced, you can afford to pay for them yourself. In many cases, long-term care insurance or other sources provide assistance with the cost. Home is where the help is. Call Windsor Place at-home care, 800-982-1866. Make your home more comforting with help from Derailed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses.
8.18 to go in the first half. I'm Shane Hill. We appreciate your patience. We're trying to work on some connection issues that we're having at Nellis Hall here this afternoon. And C.J. Smith's shot no good. Ravens up 11 again, 25-14, 8.05 to go. And we're going to keep working on this until we uh, get the situation resolved. But hopefully this is working at least for now. Janai Summers jumps that pass. Speaking of players that are working, Janai Summers can't finish in transition. He thought he was hit. He was not, according to the officials. Here's Ice Emery. Emery attacks, and that's going to be a bucket and the foul for Ice Emery. And now Dodge City's closed the gap back to single digits. They'll try to cut it to an eight-point game. And immediate timeout, so... We've returned, and we're going to try and work with uh, this uh, current setup. We'll uh, take a quick little 60-second break. We'll be right back here on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. Lay steak bowl from Taco Mayo. A heaping bowl filled with Mexican favorites and literally erupting with filet mignon. The filet ole steak bowl can be yours if you make it past Chuck Steak Canyon and the deadly sirloin abyss. Filet mignon beckons, my friend, on the meaty, mighty pinnacle of beefdom. The filet ole steak bowl from Taco Mayo. Welcome to Meat Mountain. Got a car? Maybe a motorcycle or even a boat. Do you rent or own your own home? If you have any of these, call NDB in Coffeeville and then relax. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies so that they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeeville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-9. Ravens lead at 25-16. We'll see Brian Griffith check back in. I'm Shane Neal, US 98, and the Red Ravens Sports Network. We appreciate your patience as we continue to work on some connection issues that we're having here currently. We're going to hopefully have those resolved as soon as possible, but we do appreciate you hanging out with us and enjoying Red Raven basketball here on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. Ice Emery trying to complete the three-point play. He does. And it's 25-17. Ken Boy hands it off to Griffith. Griffith trying to answer with a three, and that one off the rim, no good. This is Ice Emery bringing it up. Emery spins. Emery trying to break down Ken Boy. Now it gets a pass. Nice ball movement by Dodge City, and the shot is good. Three-pointer, and the Conquistadors have closed into a five-point game after the Ravens led by 15 just a few moments ago. So Dodge City not giving in early in this one after the Ravens came out red hot. The Conquistadors have responded. That's how big this game is. Both teams wanting to host a playoff game. Smith is fouled on the way up by Jackson Swartz. So C.J. Smith at the free throw line for Coffeyville. 7-10 to go first half. First one for C.J. is up in nothing but net. Ravens came into this game 10-16. and 16. Dodge City 9-18. and 18. They're separated by half a game in the conference standings. Battling for playoff positioning. Smith goes 2-2 two for two with the stripe. 27-20 our score. Dodge City basketball. And they get it to Ice Emery. Emery trying to Pull up for a jump shot. That one is nothing but net. And some words for the student section from Ice Emery. The Appleton, Wisconsin product. Javen Kofer has it now. Works it right to Carroll. Carroll trying to break down the young defender, Camry. They work it to Kofer. 10 to shoot now for Coffeyville. They lead it by five. CJ. Ravens with six to shoot. Griffith. Got to get a shot. Brian Griffith takes a tough one and missed it off the rim. No good. Rebound Hunter Duncan. Good defense on that possession by Dodge City. Duncan has it now. They work it to Emery. Emery quick trigger, and he got it. Ice Emery heating up, and it's a two-point game as Dodge City has come all the way back following a very slow start. Javen hands off to CJ. Carroll with a pull up. Carroll knocks it down. Chris Carroll from downtown with an answer. Chris Carroll 
big shot there for Carroll. And it's 30 to 25 here with 5.45 to go in the first half. Dodge City has clawed their way back into this one. Ravens have still looked like the better team through the first 14 minutes. Ice Emery hands it off to Duncan. Duncan back to Emery. Emery, their top scorer all year long. And he finds Sways for three. That one is good. Dodge City is much more dialed in offensively in the last five minutes or so. Now Carroll has the basketball. Ravens 30, Dodge City 28. And another triple for the Ravens. That one off the rim, no good. Duncan the rebound, and Dodge City can tie or take the lead. And the drive by Duncan throws it up. No, Swayze queens it up. Going over the top. And we're knotted at 30 with five to go in the first half. Here's Griffith on the left wing. Ravens got off to a hot start. And that shot is good for Carroll. Chris Carroll knocks down the mid-range jump shot. Ravens retake the lead. Carroll's been big in this first half after coming back from illness. Four and a half to play. First half, Ravens 32, Dodge City 30. And now this is number 13, Dawson Taylor. Taylor gets it to Canry. Canry with the basketball now. With the Conks down by two, and he throws it right to Javen Kofer. Kofer coming the other way, two on two. Javen all the way inside, no. Carroll cleans it up. And it's the Chris Carroll show at Nellis Hall. Ravens by four, four to go first half. Chris Carroll has come alive. Duncan works it to the corner. Camry down low, Griffith got a hand on it and a foul is called. Brian Griffith fouls the freshman Jackson Swartz. An immediate timeout, 3.49 to go first half. Ravens 34, Dodge City 30. We're back at 60 seconds on US 98, the Red Ravens Sports Network. and experienced medical staff, caring medical professionals, and a 24-hour emergency room staffed with emergency medicine physicians. We are people you know and healthcare you trust. For more information, visit our website, crmcinc.org. When you need to rely on a nursing facility for the care of a loved one, wouldn't it be comfort? that the owner is providing the care. Owner Stephanie Bean with Medical Lodges is proud to supply that tender care in Coffeeville. Skilled nursing services, rehabilitation, adult daycare, and much more are all offered. Visit medicallodges.com or stop by 2921 West 1st in Coffeeville and learn more. Medical Lodges Coffeeville. Ravens lead at 34-30, late first half, 3.49 to go in the first half to be exact. I'm Shane Neal, US 98, the Red Ravens Sports Network. So happy you're with us. Appreciate your patience as we've been working on some uh, connection issues that have unfolded here in game two of our doubleheader. We think we have it in a place where it's going to work for now, and if there's any more issues that arise, we uh, will continue to work on those. But we do appreciate your patience. Ravens off to a great start. Uh, Dodge City battle back. But Chris Carroll is giving Coffeeville the lead right back. 34-30, our score. Duncan tries to hop into the lane. Kicks it to the corner and a travel. Not a travel, excuse me. Stepping on the baseline was Camry. That's Marius Camry, the freshman out of Lawrence, Massachusetts. And he'll be subbed out as we see the return of Jamari Gamble. Coffeeville basketball. They've scored the last four points after Dodge City tied the game. And we'll see if they can build this lead back up. Carroll nearly had it taken away. Kicks it to Kofer. Good look for Javen. It's good! Javen Kofer from downtown off the assist from Chris Carroll. Ice Emery, the drive to the baseline. Got a step on Griffith and finishes at the cup. Ice Emery showing what is one of the top scoring guards in the Jayhawk. Here's Carroll. Carroll attacking right back. Chris, no, CJ got a hand on it, tapped it back to Carroll, who finishes the job. 
39-32, Coffeyville. 2.50 to go, first half. As Dawson Taylor hands it off. Hunter Duncan has it now, guarded by Kofer. Ice Emery's feeling it, sends it good. Ice Emery knocks down the triple, 39-35. Janai Summers, nice pump fake. They work it to Carroll, Carroll the hot hand, and he left that one short, out of bounds, and Dodge City basketball. A little bit of a heat check there from Chris Carroll. 2.27 to go, first half, Ravens still lead it by four. But after a start where the Ravens led it 24 to nine early in this one, Don City's battled back, and since then we've had a back and forth contest. Two teams that you can tell they want this one bad. Duncan, both these teams wanting to host a playoff game. Duncan has it now, he's picked up by Carroll. 12 to shoot for Dodge. Duncan gets around Carroll, goes at Griffith and draws a foul. And free throws coming for Hunter Duncan. That's the second on Brian Griffith. 2.07 to go in the first half. Ice Emery has really revived this Dodge City offense. Of course, they, like we said earlier, they're without Gavin Shannon, who is one of their top scorers in the first half of the season. And we'll see Caparasso return after the first free throw by Duncan. No good. Charles Caparasso is in for Brian Griffith. So a bigger lineup here for the Ravens. Carroll, Smith, Summers, and Caparasso all out there at the same time. Duncan goes one for two as he gets the second one to rattle home. It's a three-point lead for Coffeyville. We're going to go under two minutes to go in the first half. Ravens 39, Dodge City 36. Janai steps into a three, and it rims out. Uncan uncharacteristic miss there from Summers on an open look and now this is a three to tie the game and it's good for Gamble 39 apiece a minute 40 left in the first half Ravens Carroll for three not that time and two quick empty possessions for the Raven offense Dodge City can take the lead Gamble had it poked by Carroll it's still loose and Chris comes down with it Janai Minute 22 to go, first half. We're not at 39. Caparasso had it taken away, tried to take it back, and now a foul against Charles. And that'll be the second on Caparasso. So free throws now as Ravens are in the double bonus. And Coffeeville and Dodge City just in the regular bonus. So one and one here for Jackson Swartz. Swartz on the season is about a 64% free throw shooter. His free throw up and in and out. Battle for the rebound. Caparasso comes away with it. Here comes Carroll. We're tied at 39. Final 70 seconds of the first half. Kofer works it left to Chris Carroll. Carroll to Kofer. Kofer hit a three couple minutes ago. This time he looks for a pass, finds Janai Summers. Under a minute left, first half. Summers sends it and left it short. Rebound taken by Charles Caparasso. Second chance for the Ravens. CJ on the baseline. 15 to shoot for Coffeyville. CJ attacks, goes up, can't finish. And the rebound pulled down by, Sway, uh, by Swartz. 40 seconds left, first half. We're tied at 39 and a timeout taken by Dodge. We'll take it with them. We're back in 60 seconds on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. to school programs to funding home and business loans every day community state bank is at work in our neighborhood whether you bank at community state bank or not they're working for you every day community state bank member fdic equal housing lender i'm mike avey and at community state bank we believe in coffeeville you have a choice on where to go and who you want to be here at coffeeville community college you can be you we can make you workforce ready at one of our technical campuses be a student athlete, join an honors program or an activity, have a voice with student government, and be involved with student life events. Our school believes in our red and white traditions, providing you with a quality education and preparing you for the next journey in life. Once you 
You know you've made the right choice. Let us... Tie game, 30 seconds left, first half. Duncan's jump shot is short. Rebound Summers, and now the Ravens with a chance to take the lead, and Jay Herkelman calls timeout. 27.9 left, we'll keep it here. Ravens in Dodge City, tied at 39. Such a big game for the playoffs, of course. Dodge City currently in eighth, Red Ravens in ninth. The top eight teams in the league get to host a playoff game. So obviously two teams fighting for that eighth spot. Still some uh, time to move up to seven as well, but the Ravens obviously want to have a game at Nellis Hall. And they beat Dodge City out on the road. They're looking to win and sweep the season series. And that way they would have the tiebreaker as we move towards the final stretch of the season. Ravens will also get a chance with Colby coming to town next weekend. They get a chance at the Hutchinson Blue Dragons on Wednesday as well. So some games coming up for the Ravens to try and piece together some W's, get hot before the tournament. They have 28 seconds right now trying to take the lead. We're tied at 39. We'll be joined by Lady Raven coach Tony Turner at the half. Talk about game one of our doubleheader where the Lady Ravens fell 70-57. to Janai Summers hands it off to Javen Kofer. Ravens walk it up. We're down to 22 seconds, first half. Kofer. He's not, to, he's not in a rush. Ice Emery is on him. Now down to 12 seconds. Kofer still handles the ball. Hands it to Kofer. Now back to Javen. Eight seconds, and now the Ravens will go. Hand off Carroll. Carroll gets to the corner, sends it, and in and out. Caparasso got a hand on it. Duncan comes away with it, tries to fire, and we'll see if it counts. It does not. It didn't go in anyway. 20 minutes in the books. Two teams fighting for a home playoff game, and it's been a fight at Nellis Hall. 39 apiece. We'll step away for five minutes. We'll look at first half stats. We'll talk to Coach Turner when we come back on the Red Raven Halftime Show in five minutes on US 98 and the Red Raven Sports Network. housekeeping, shopping, and more. These helpful services are so reasonably priced, you can afford to pay for them yourself. In many cases, long-term care insurance or other sources provide assistance with the cost. Home is where the help is. Call Windsor Place at Home Care, 800-982-1866. Make your home more comforting with help from Derailed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local Derailed Commodity Flooring and Furniture, Braselton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin and Butler, Missouri. Taco Mayo's new filet ole steak bowl is piled high with fillet mignon. It's filet mignon. A heaping bowl loaded with refried beans, Mexicali rice, cheddar jack, sour cream, and tender filet mignon. It's filet mignon. Filet mignon. A uh, filet mignon. Filet mignon. Filet mignon. Savor the juicy filet ole steak bowl stacked with filet mignon and only from Taco Mayo. That's a wrap. No, that's a bowl. Got a car? Maybe a motorcycle or even a boat. Do you rent or own your own home? If you have any of these, call NDB in Coffeeville and then relax. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies so that they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeeville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. At CRMC Medical Group, our primary care physicians and providers focus on ways to keep you and your family in good health, as well as care for them when they're not. Our family medicine and women's health physicians are accepting new patients. We have convenient office locations in Coffeeville and Independence with extended and Saturday hours in Coffeeville. If you need a physician or need to make an appointment, please call 620-688-6566. That's 620-688-6566. 
When you need to rely on a nursing facility for the care of a loved one, wouldn't it be comforting to know that the owner is providing the care? Owner Stephanie Bean with Medical Lodges is proud to supply that tender care in Coffeeville. Skilled nursing services, rehabilitation, adult daycare, and much more are all offered. Visit medicallodges.com or stop by 2921 West 1st in Coffeeville and learn more. Medical Lodges Coffeeville, where they serve and enhance the lives of others with caring hands. This is Community State Bank at Work. This is Community State Bank at Work in our community. From kids' activities to school programs to funding home and business loans, every day Community State Bank is at work in our neighborhood. Whether you bank at Community State Bank or not, they're working for you every day. Community State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. I'm Mike Avey, and at Community State Bank, we believe in Coffeeville. You have a choice on where to go and who you want to be. Here at Coffeeville Community College, you can be you. We can make you work for ready at one of our technical campuses, be a student athlete, join an honors program or an activity, have a voice with student government, and be involved with student life events. Our school believes in our red and white traditions, providing you with a quality education and preparing you for the next journey in life. Once you experience our campus, you know you've made the right choice. Let us help you make our story your story and become Raven Proud. Red Ravens and Dodge City tied at 39 at the half here in game two of our doubleheader. I'm Shane Neal. It's the US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. So happy you're with us. And let's take a look at first half stats. We'll be joined by head coach Tony Turner of the Lady Ravens in just a moment. For the Dodge City Conquistadors, it is 47% from the floor, 36% from three, 67% at the line. For the Ravens, 39% from the field, 31% from three, 77% at the line. Ravens win the rebound battle 20 to 17. The Ravens have dished out, each team's dished out six assists. The Ravens have committed five turnovers. Dodge City has committed eight turnovers. Both teams have five three pointers made. Both teams have eight second chance points. This game's pretty deadlocked, I'll tell you that. Leading scores for Dodge City 13 for Ice Emery in this one, nine for Jackson Swartz, six for Hunter Duncan, and three for Jamari Gamble. For the Red Ravens, 16 for Chris Carroll. Eight for Janai Summers, six for C.J. Smith, five for Brian Griffith, three for Javen Kofer, 1.5 rebounds for Charles Caparasso. Ravens, you got to like a lot of what you see from Coffeeville in the first 20 minutes. Obviously, the score is tied, but you see uh, winning the rebound battle. You see not turning the ball over very much, only five turnovers. You see 16 assists. You see five three-pointers made. 39%, not the worst field goal percentage in the world. 77% of the line, very respectable. And uh, so a lot of things this Raven team doing, I think they're doing at a level that is uh, you know, a level good enough to win. And I think we'll, if the Ravens can continue what they've done in the first 20 minutes, we may see them build a lead back up in the second half. Red Ravens, Dodge City tied at 39. Let's take another three-minute break. We'll be joined by head coach Tony Turner to talk about the Lady Raven game. When we return on the Red Raven Halftime Show presented by Community State Bank, we're back in three minutes on US 98 and the Red Raven Sports Network. Their caregivers are prepared to help you with laundry, meals, housekeeping, shopping, and more. These helpful services are so reasonably priced, you can afford to pay for them yourself. In many cases, Long-term care insurance or other sources provide assistance with the cost. Home is where the help is. Call Windsor Place at Home Care, 800-982-1866. This is Meat Mountain, and up there on the summit awaits the all-new filet o -Lay steak bowl from Taco Mayo. A heaping bowl filled with Mexican favorites and literally erupting with filet mignon. The filet ole steak bowl can be yours if you make it past Chuck Steak Canyon and the deadly sirloin abyss. Filet mignon beckons, my friend, on the meaty, mighty pinnacle of beefdom. The filet ole steak bowl from Taco Mayo. Welcome to Meat Mountain. Got a car? Maybe a motorcycle or even a boat. 
Do you rent or own your own home? If you have any of these, call NDB in Coffeeville and then relax. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies so that they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeeville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. At CRMC Medical. Whether you bank at Community State Bank or not, they're working for you every day. Community State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. I'm Mike Avey, and at Community State Bank, we believe in Coffeeville. Red Ravens tied at 39 with the Dodge City Conquistadors at the half. I'm Shay Neal, and earlier today we saw the Lady Ravens come up short in game one of our doubleheader against Dodge City, 70-57, to and now uh, we normally do it post-game, but today we're doing it at halftime of game two. We're talking to head coach Tony Turner about game one uh, here this afternoon, and coach, uh, we saw some things that we, we said we were going to see. Dodge City not historically good offensively today. Uh, actually struggled a little bit from, from beyond the arc, but I think you look at this one and how it went, and you just see, like you talked about, a lot of high IQ players, don't make a lot of mistakes, uh, and at the end of the game, you look at the Dodge City numbers, and you're just like, man, they were just solid in every aspect of the game. Oh, he has a very good team. They play hard. They just got a lot of basketball instinct, and, and it's just tough. And, you know, we're getting there. We're trying to figure out how to get to that kind of basketball level of just playing basketball, don't be robotic, play with some swag, play with some confidence. And I thought we did a, a much better job today than we did the last time out there. But, yeah, Dodge has a very good team. Coach, uh, something that uh, stood out to me, I think thirteen. your team finishes with 13 turnovers. I don't think that's necessarily a, a bad number, but I think it was really the uh, the, opera, the, the, uh, the timing of some of those turnovers where in the second half your team was closing the gap a little bit and a couple uh, passes that were deflected and led to easy layups for the Conquistadors. Uh, obviously took care of the basketball overall today, but in those situations where you're gaining momentum and you're starting to chip away, uh, what do you got to do better to protect the basketball? Well, you know, we just got to do a better job as a coaching staff, trying to just figure out when we're starting to get fatigued and tired. I thought some of those turnovers were just from fatigue, and we just didn't get them out of the game fast enough and let them take a quick breather and then get them back in. But that's just part of it. We'll be okay. I mean, that, that's, you know, part of the game. It's, it's the end of the day. Coach, uh, Ivy Fox got uh, off to a slow start, only a one of seven in the first half. Looked like she was maybe coming back down to earth after her great week last week, but uh, – in that second half, she was fantastic. Finished with 22 points on 8 of 18 shooting. Uh, had an assist as well, only two turnovers. She was uh, really in that stretch. There was a stretch at the end of the third quarter into the first couple minutes of the fourth quarter where she was your entire team's offense for about five minutes. And uh, the last two weeks, we've really, I think, seen Ivy mature on the offensive end. Oh, I was a big-time player, and, you know, she didn't let that offense dictate her defense. She kept battling, and I keep telling them, when you miss a couple shots early, just going to keep battling on the defensive end, and that offense will come to you. And, and she bought into that, and she did a really good job tonight of just staying hungry, keep working, keep battling, where she was just a little fatigued there toward, you know, those couple turnovers that she had. But, no, she did a great job for us. Coach, final thing I have for you, appreciate your time. I noticed uh, late in this game when your team was down 
nine, 11 points that uh, you had the ball and you'd, you'd be taking 22, 23 seconds off the shot clock. And I just want to get your thoughts on this because it feels like when you're obviously down nine, 10 points, you're kind of looking for more maybe 15 to 18 second possessions, trying to chip away and get as many possessions as you can. But uh, I, I, I didn't know if you had a different philosophy on that, but I obviously with plenty of close games on the horizon as we move towards the postseason. I'm curious on how you thought your team executed down the stretch. Well, it was not drew up that way, and we had a couple of quick hitters in there to go play and, and be aggressive, but, you know, Dodge has a very good defensive team. They're so big, and, you know, they, they're quick, and, and they did a good job on us to keep us from getting those shots off quick. They just get their hands up, and our shooters got to learn. I, you know, a couple of times, I'm like, shoot it, you know, and, and they just didn't, and, no, it wasn't designed to do that <laughs> at all. Now, early in the game, we wanted to work it and, and get them going, just kind of make them play some defense. But late in the game, we wanted to be a little more aggressive and attack. But we'll watch film, and we'll figure out what we got to do to counter, and hopefully we'll see them again down the road. Lady Ravens will get ready for the Hutchinson Blue Dragons coming up on Wednesday. Coach Tony Turner, good enough to join us to recap game one of our doubleheader here today. Coach, always appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Thank you. Absolutely. Let's step away for 90 seconds. Second half action coming up this year from Nellis Hall. It's on where to go and who you want to be. We can make you workforce ready at one of our technical campuses, be a student athlete, join an honors program or an activity, have a voice with student government, and be involved with student life events. Our school believes in our red and white traditions, providing you with a quality education and preparing you for the next journey in life. Once you experience our campus, you know you've made the right choice. Let us help you make our story your story and become Raven Proud. Make your home more comforting with help from Derailed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local Derailed Commodity Flooring and Furniture, Braselton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin and Butler, Missouri. Taco Mayo's new Filet Olay Steak Bowl is piled high with Filet Minon. It's Filet Minon. A heaping bowl loaded with refried beans, Mexicali rice, cheddar jack, sour cream, and tender Filet Mignon. It's Filet Minon. Filet Minon. A uh, Filet Minion. Filet Minon. Filet Minon. Savor the juicy Filet Olay Steak Bowl stacked with Filet Minon and only from Taco Mayo. That's a wrap. No, that's a bowl. Ravens and Dodge City tied at 39 as we get ready to start the second half here on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. I'm Shay Neal. So happy you're with us here on this Saturday. Ravens looking for a big time win to move them into eighth place in the conference standings and put them in position to potentially host a playoff game in the first round of the Region 6 tournament. And they try to get a backdoor cut to Sways. Ravens were ready for it. Possession stays alive. They work it to the corner for Emery. That shot is off. Rebound Summers. And the Raven defense gets a quick stop on defense. We're tied at 39. We've been pretty deadlocked most of the way after the Ravens got off to a hot start. Dodge City battled back since then. We've been nearly deadlocked. Janai Summers steps back, sends a three, and got it. Janai Summers from downtown. A great sign if you're the Ravens. If Janai can get going, that could be the difference in a game like this. 42-39, Coffeyville. 19-11 to play in this one. This is Boulard. Works it left. Sways tries to answer with a three of his own. In and out. Rebound, Summers. Dodge City's come up empty on their first two possessions of the second half. Janai, handoff to Kofer. Kofer guarded by the much larger Tyler Williams. CJ down low, guarded by Sways. CJ attacks, goes up, draws contact, no good. Battle for the rebound. Carroll pulls it down. Chris goes up and was fouled. Ravens, the duo really particularly of C.J. Smith and Chris Carroll have been absolutely fantastic down low. That's the second foul on Sways. And now Kofer has it. Kofer working for a pass. Finds Janai Summers. Summers on the left wing. Back to Javen. Javen sends it for three. That one is short. And the Ravens come up empty on that possession. 18.34 to go in this one. 
The only points of the second half, a corner three-pointer from Janai Summers. Ravens lead at 42-39. Dodge City looking for their first points of the second half. Kofer attached to the hip of Ice Emery. Now Kofer switches on to the larger Williams. Carroll on Emery. This is Hunter Duncan. Duncan looking for a pass. 10 to shoot for Dodge. Emery off a screen. Carroll picks him up. Emery trying to create space. Throws it up. Missed the shot. Summers got a hand on it. Tipped it to CJ. Ravens have gotten three straight stops. Griffith, the floater in transition, no. Carroll trying to get a hand on it. And Boular able to pull down the rebound. So still only one score in the first two plus minutes of the second half. Swartz for three, that one is off. Rebound, Janai. So Dodge City has come out cold and Swartz jumped that pass. Janai tries to run it down and he blocked it. But a foul is called, my goodness. That's a foul against Summers, his first, but what a recovery. After throwing it away, it looked like Swartz was going to have an easy layup slash dunk. And Janai comes flying in out of nowhere, swats it behind the cheerleaders. And now Swartz will have to earn him at the free throw line, which is not a guarantee. He's a 64% free throw shooter. First one, no good. Dodge City struggled at the free throw line in this game, just 6 of 10. Second free throw for Swartz is good. 42-40, the first point of the second half for the Conquistadors. Brian Griffith on the left wing, guarded by Emery, and it's kicked by Ice Emery. Inbound goes to Griffith. Griffith guarded by Emery. Ravens have 15 to shoot. They work it to Janai Summers. Summers hands off to C.J. Smith. 10 to shoot now. Griffith off a screen. Got a step on Emery, but now five to shoot. Ravens got to find a shot. Janai steps back, tries to create space. Summers left it a little bit short. Not a great possession there by the Raven offense. Now three minutes into the second half. Dodge can tie or take the lead. Duncan nearly lost it. Now finds Emery on the baseline. And a foul against Carroll. Excuse me, they'll change it to a jump ball. And now it's Raven basketball. Emery wanted a foul. I think Ravens fans thought there was a foul call, but they changed it to a jump ball, and Chris Carroll gets the stop. Raven basketball, they have not scored since that Janai Summers three in the opening 30 seconds. 42-40, Coffeyville the lead. A huge game for the postseason. Chris Carroll the attack, Carroll goes up, draws a foul. Carroll had 16 in the first half. He was out almost all week with the flu. And Chris Carroll has been a game changer for Coffeyville today. That's the third on Williams. Chris Carroll at the line. Carroll in this one is three of four at the free throw line. On the season, Chris, a very solid free throw shooter over 80%. The sophomore out of Tallahassee, Florida, knocks down the first. Of course, a transfer of Hutchinson Community College. Chris started his career at Hutch. Did not play a ton. Wanted some more minutes. Wanted a scheme that fit his game more. And match made in heaven. Jay Herkelman found his sophomore star. Chris Carroll found a home at Nellis Hall. Two for two for Carroll. Pass up ahead to Boulard. Boulard trying to get down the lane. And Smith with good defense there. Rebound Carroll. Here come the Ravens with numbers. Carroll attacks again. Carroll no, and he's fouled again. And Chris will go right back to the free throw line. Foul will be on Ice Emery, his first. And now Chris Carroll right back to the stripe with 16 and a half to play. Carroll working on an active 19 points. First one is good. The Ravens for a majority of this game have looked like the better team, but Dodge City, credit to them. They've hung in there. They've got a lot of talent, and they're, of course, still in position to win this basketball game. Carroll goes 2 of 2. He goes 4 of 4 in the last 30 seconds, and he has 20 points for Coffeyville. 
Emery and Duncan work their way up the court. Duncan now, a trap comes. Duncan works it to Swartz, and now Boular sends the triple in and out, and the rebound taken by Carroll. Chris Carroll coming up the other way. Jay Herkelman wants his team to push. Griffith, Carroll, Carroll sends it. Chris left that one short. And out of bounds, last touched by the Ravens. We're about four minutes into this one. We'll have our, our first media timeout of the second half of the next dead ball. Ravens lead it 46 to 40. This would be a massive victory for the Ravens. Duncan spinning jump shot, rims out, rebound Carroll. Dodge City has not been very, very, uh, very efficient offensively out of the time, out of the half. Summers now with it. Summers trying to attack, and that's going to be called a carry and a turnover. Janai does not like that call. 15.41 to go in this one. Ravens up six. Let's take a 60-second break. We'll be right back on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. Any of these, call NDB in Coffeeville and then relax. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies so that they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeeville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. At CRMC Medical Group, our primary care physicians and providers focus on ways to keep you and your family in good health, as well as care for them when they're not. Our family medicine and women's health physicians are accepting new patients. We have convenient office locations in Coffeeville and Independence with extended and Saturday hours in Coffeeville. If you need a physician or need to make an appointment, please call 620-688-6566. That's 620-688-6566. points for Chris Carroll despite coming back from missing most of the week with the flu. I'm Shane Neal, it's US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network and crowd having a fun time here at Nellis Hall this afternoon looking for a doubleheader split after the Lady Ravens came up short in game one. A lot of things to like about that Lady Raven performance though. I think uh, held their own really well with a team that's top 15 in the nation and uh, I think uh, much like last year, if those two teams match up a third time, might be the Ravens' time to get the W. Duncan, no good. Rebound, Smith. Ravens with the ball. They have some momentum. Only one point in the second half for Dodge. It was at the free throw line. Kofer hands it off to Kemboy. Ravens try to build their lead back up to three scores. They get it to Carroll. Tried to get it to Carroll. That one was poked by Avnor Bular. Here comes Dodge now the other way. Duncan hands it off to Swartz. And now Ice Emery back to Boulard. Down low, that one poked by Kofer. Ravens get a steal right back. Up ahead to Janai. Janai goes right at Emery. No good. Nice job by Emery to go straight up. That's good defense there by the sophomore guard. The drive by Emery. He lays it in, plus the foul. Ice Emery now up to 15 points. And it looked to cut it back to a three-point game at the line. We see the return of Delroy Smith, a freshman out of Hillside, New Jersey, as he comes in for Swartz. Ice Emery has really been the savior of the Dodge City offense, especially since the loss of Gavin Shannon, but he missed the free throw. It's a four-point game. Carroll with yet another rebound. Up ahead to Janai. Janai's got space, sends it for three. Summers put it in! You cannot give Janai that much room, and he's got it. Now Dawson Taylor on the drive on the other end, gets it back out to Emery, 14-26 to play. Coffeyville 49, Dodge City 42. Duncan tries to break down CJ. What a spin move, Hunter Duncan. A beautiful finish from Hunter Duncan, the freshman out of Chicago. Carroll goes right at the defense, draws contact. Foul will be on Smith. And Chris Carroll will go back to the free throw line where he has found a home in the last five minutes. Fourth team foul against Dodge City. Chris Carroll at the line looking to add to his already 20 point game. This Raven team of course has had 
a lot of frustration build up this year. A lot of close calls, a lot of so close yet so far, needing to get back in the win column, needing to find something that works for the playoffs and a big win over Dodge City to climb back into eighth and be able to host a playoff game, that'd be a start. Carroll goes two of two, it's a seven point lead. And the Conquistadors work it up. This is Duncan. Duncan finds Canry. Canry, the trap comes. Canry threw it back court. And that's a turnover. And I think Hunter, Dun Hunter Duncan and the official there just uh, exchanged a little uh, amusement. I don't know what it was said, but uh, they were both having a good time right there. Janai will inbound it right in front of us. It's a seven-point lead for Coffeyville under 14 minutes to play. Janai Summers. Summers finds Carroll. Carroll has 22 points for Coffeyville. He attacks again. This time hands it off to Kemboy. Kemboy's pass intercepted by Duncan. Duncan driving the other way and one. Hunter Duncan was fouled by Kofer. Able to finish at the rim. That's a big shot. Big sequence there for Dodge. With Coffeyville having the ball up by three scores. And now all of a sudden, Conquistadors can cut it down to four. Free throw for Hunter. No good. And a lane violation. So a second chance for Duncan. A... Mental mistake by the Ravens. And after Duncan missed the free throw, he's going to get a second chance to try and cut it to four. This time the freshman out of Chicago sends it and hits it. 51-47, Ravens with the lead. They have the basketball. That one deflected and stolen. Here comes Gamble the other way. It's a two-point game. Kofer kicks it to Summers. Nice ball fake by Janai. Dodge City continues to battle back and claw. 51-49. Kofer off a screen. Hands it to Carroll. Carroll with a game-high 22. Spins into the lane. Goes up. Fouled again. Chris Carroll. He is the aggressor this afternoon. Foul was on Gamble. Carroll at the free throw line. He's 6 of 6 at the stripe here in the second half. First one up and good. Brian Griffith returns for Coffeyville in for Javen Kofer. One more free throw to come here for Carroll, and he's now 8 of 8 in the second half from the stripe. He's got 24 points. Chris Carroll putting the Ravens on his back this afternoon. Ravens by 4. Dawson Taylor hands off to Ice Emery. Under 13 to play. Ravens 53, Dodge 49. And now the drive by Boatwright. Kicks it to the corner. Janai got a hand on it. It will stay with the Conquistadors with 10 on the shot clock. Raven defense looking to get a stop here on this possession. Close out and hang on to their two-score lead. Ice Emery. Smith picks him up. That's a nice crossover move to create some space. The shot is no good. The rebound is taken by Janai Summers. Janai hands it off to Carroll. Ravens got a stop. Can they put together a score? Janai, guarded by Boatwright. Trying to get it down low to CJ. CJ finds Carroll. Dangerous pass. Chris gets to the baseline. Chris goes up. No. Tapped it up again. No. Got his rebound. Chris Carroll on a mission this afternoon. Charles Caparasso moves to the scorer's table. Chris Carroll. Would you believe he's been sick all week? That shot no good. The rebound taken by who else? Chris Carroll, Griffith, 
Hand off to Chris. He sends it. He got it! Timeout dodge. Chris Carroll has taken this one over. We're back in 60 seconds. In Coffeeville, skilled nursing services, rehabilitation, adult daycare, and much more are all offered. Visit medicallodges.com or stop by 2921 West 1st in Coffeeville and learn more. Medical Lodges Coffeeville, where they serve and enhance the lives of others with caring hands. This is Community State Bank at work. This is Community State Bank at work in our community. From kids' activities to school programs to funding home and business loans, every day Community State Bank is at work in our neighborhood. Whether you bank at Community State Bank or not, they're working for you every day. Community State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. I'm Mike Avey, and at Community State... Ravens up 58-49 with 11.54 to go from Nellis Hall. Chris Carroll is a big reason for that. He has been unbelievable out all week with an illness. Did not make the trip to Garden City. Did not practice until Friday. And he's pushing 30 points and a double-double. What a night for Chris Carroll. And the Ravens up by nine looking to get a big-time home win for their playoff hopes. This is Gamble handing it off to Swartz. Swartz now works it right. This is Hunter Duncan. Duncan hands it off. And now Boatwright trying to get to the baseline. Throws it up and one. Nice finish inside by Jace Boatwright. And Boatwright, another Kansas kid out of Leavenworth. Excuse me, Boatwright out of Lenexa. Brings us to immediate timeout, 11.33 to go. Free throw coming for the Conquistadors. Ravens by seven. We're back in 60 seconds on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. Coffeeville Community College, you can be you. We can make you workforce ready at one of our technical campuses, be a student athlete, join an honors program or an activity, have a voice with student government, and be involved with student life events. Our school believes in our red and white traditions, providing you with a quality education and preparing you for the next journey in life. Once you experience our campus, you know you've made the right choice. Let us help you make our story your story and become Raven proud if you could use a little help around the house windsor place at home care is the perfect solution for you their caregivers are prepared to help you with laundry meals housekeeping shopping and more these helpful services are so reasonably priced you can afford to pay for them yourself in many cases long-term care insurance or other sources provide assistance with the cost home is where the help is call windsor place at home care 800-982-1866. 800-982-1866. Chris Carroll has 29 points, 12 rebounds. A day after being cleared to practice, after being out with illness all week. But now, right, right now, Jace Broat right at the free throw line trying to cut it to six for Dodge, and the free throw up, and no good. Rebound taken by Carroll. Dodge City's really struggled at the free throw line this afternoon. Eight of 14 now. Ravens, 18 of 21, much better. Here's Janai Summers. Summers pressured by Duncan. Now hands it off to Kemboy. And that one jumped. They tried to get it to Carroll, and Kemboy will be called for a foul. And they might call that one a clear path foul. Jeremiah Kemboy called for the foul. And that's what, indeed what it'll be. It'll be two shots on a clear path foul against Kemboy. He's trying to get the ball to Chris Carroll. And I think Dodge City knew he was trying to get the ball to Chris Carroll. First free throw up and short. Gamble misses a shot. Now 8 of 15 at the line are the Conquistadors. One more free throw to come. Gamble got it. 58-52. We'll see Kofer return for Kemboy. Ravens still lead it by six. It will be Dodge City basketball. It was a clear path foul. So two shots in the ball. They hit one of those two shots. 
But now a three-point shot could cut it back to a one-score game. That's what Dodge City's done all afternoon, just survived the punches from Coffeyville. Red Ravens have not been able to pull away. Now looking for a pass. Dawson Taylor gets it to the baseline. Boat right fouled by Griffith. And now one more foul. And Dodge City's in the bonus the rest of the way. Coffeyville only two fouls away from the bonus as well, but that's the third on Brian Griffith. Inbounds goes to Swartz. Swartz hands it off to Duncan. Duncan drives, kicks. Shot is up and off. Rebound taken by Janai Summers, and he's fouled by Dawson Taylor. And now both teams just one foul away from the bonus. Taylor called for the contact. That's his second. Dawson out of Kansas City. 10.52 to play. Raven basketball. They lead it 58-52. Brian Griffith guarded closely by Jace Boatwright. Nice spin move by Brian. He attacks, throws it up, and got it and one for Brian Griffith. And a chance for a three-point play for Griffith. Foul was the second on Boatwright. Free throw for Brian, trying to put the team up by nine. He does. Dodge City's kept it within single digits ever since that early run by the Ravens, but Coffeyville now with a nine-point edge. This is Gamble attacking. Gamble goes up. He lays it in. 61-54. Here comes Kofer. Both teams finding success on the offensive end. Carroll spins. Nobody finding more success than Chris Carroll. 31 for Carroll. Duncan swings it left to Boatwright. Boatwright guarded by Caparasso. Kicks to the corner for Taylor. And now Gamble. Gamble scored on their last possession. He gets around Summers. Hands up Boatwright. Boatwright with the scoop layup. What a finish by Jace Boatwright. Boatwright, the Lenexa, Kansas product. Summers now a floater on the other end. And there's an answer from Janai, 65-56. Ravens try to get back defensively. 9.47 to play. Ravens by nine. Three for Gamble is short. Rebound run down by Swartz. Second opportunity, Boatwright, the drive lays it in. Timeout, Dodge City. Ravens up by seven. Dodge City not quitting yet 65 58 we're back in 60 seconds on us 98 and the red ravens fourth network vinyl plank tile area rugs and more in many styles brands and colors new furniture always brightens a home we have a great selection of furniture including sofa sets recliners and mattresses economy to premium in stock and ready to brighten your home shop now at your local derailed commodity flooring and furniture Braselton in independence kansas and joplin and butler missouri this is Meat Mountain, and up there on the summit awaits the all-new filet o -Lay steak bowl from Taco Mayo. A heaping bowl filled with Mexican favorites and literally erupting with filet mignon. The filet o -Lay steak bowl can be yours if you make it past Chuck Steak Canyon and the deadly sirloin abyss. Filet mignon beckons, my friend, on the meaty, mighty pinnacle. Ravens with the ball up by seven, 9.25 to play. Janai Summers has it now, tries to attack Williams. Had it blocked, it will stay with Coffeyville. Long 6'9 frame of Tyler Williams, the freshman out of Cleveland. Ravens lead at 65-58. They jumped out to an early lead of 24-9. Dodge City battle back here, Summers, jump shot in and out. CJ got a hand on it, they won it over the back foul, don't get it. Drive by Duncan, no. Rebound, Boular. Dodge City gets a second opportunity, and now Duncan dribbles it out. 9.05 to play. Duncan, the pass to the corner. Boat right, stepped on the baseline. Nine oh three to go. Griffiths will bring it up. Ravens still lead it 65-58. 
Chris Carroll has 31 points and 12 rebounds. Brian Griffith looking to get it to Carroll. Now Chris has it, guarded by Boulard. C.J. Smith, ball fake, tries to get inside. That's a foul, and that'll be the fourth on Williams. Tyler Williams picks up his fourth. We'll see a quick return for Jackson Swartz. So Williams subbed out, Schwartz in. And now the Ravens in the bonus. It's free throws coming for C.J. Smith. C.J. 4 of 4 at the line today. He's got 6 points, 7 rebounds. Free throw for CJ is good. First one good. CJ now with seven points. He's five of five at the line. He has one more to try and put the Ravens back up by nine. Freshman out of Oklahoma City takes a couple of dribbles. Deep breath, fires, and in and out. Summer's got a hand on it. Last touch by the Ravens. Swartz and Summers were the two that were tangled up, and they say last touch by Janai. So 8.44 to go. It's Coffeyville 66 and Dodge City 58. Conquistador basketball here at Nellis Hall. Two teams battling to host a home playoff game. That pass back door to Gamble, and he lays it in. What a pass from Hunter Duncan. 66 to 60. The freshman Duncan has had a nice second half. Deny the drive, and another carry and another turnover. Second time they've called that today against Janai. Summer's adamant he's not doing anything wrong. But now Dodge City with a chance to draw closer. 8-18 to play, 66-60, Conquistador basketball. Swartz off a screen, guarded by Carroll, now hands it off to Boatwright. They work it to the left side. Summers screened by Bular, and lost the basketball to Duncan. Able to come up with it on the floor, and what's the call there? They're going to say out of bounds, last touch by the Ravens. Student section not happy with that one. There's 10 on the shot clock here for Dodge. Ravens won 91-72 in the first matchup between these two. This one feels a whole lot more important for the postseason outlook. Ravens lead it 66-60. Hunter Duncan trying to get to the right on Kofer. Hands it off to Gamble. Tough shot. Moving to his left. No good. Rebound boat right. Goes back up. No. Still loose. It's still loose. Carroll able to get it. And he finds Kofer. And Chris Carroll might have tweaked his knee there. Grabbed it on his way up. Brian Griffith kicks it to Janai. Janai sends it. Janai got it. Chris Carroll limping on that left knee. We hope he's okay. He's staying out there for now. 69-60 after the three from Summers. Chris Carroll grabbed that left leg when he got up from that rebound. There's a foul against Boulard. Uh, that'll send Boulard to the free throw line. An immediate timeout. 7.23 to go. Ravens up nine. We'll find out about the status of Chris Carroll's knee when we come back in 60 seconds on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies so that they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeyville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. At CRMC Medical Group, our primary care physicians and providers focus on ways to keep you and your family in good health, as well as care for them when they're not. Our family medicine and women's health physicians are accepting new patients. We have convenient office locations in Coffeyville and Independence with extended and Saturday hours in Coffeyville. If you need a physician or need to make an appointment, please call 620-688-6566. That's 620-688-6566.
Carroll have teamed up to be the dynamic duo in this second half. Janai knocks down his fourth three of the game. Chris Carroll has 33 points and 13 rebounds. Chris Carroll tweaked his leg on the last uh, little sequence, and he's staying out there. He was moving up and down the quarter with a, a slight limp. But we'll see if he uh, is able to kind of jog that off as we move forward. Free throw here for Boulard. It's up and in and out. Another missed free throw for the Conquistadors. And Boulard, second free throw, no good. Rebound Carroll, that's his 14th of the night. Hand off to Summers. Summers thought about it, now passes to Kofer. 7.08 to go, Janai. Quick move to his left, Janai, no good. Rebound taken by Swartz. And here comes Dodge with numbers. Duncan, Ice Emery, shot and is off. Rebound C.J. Smith. Big rebound for CJ. Here's Kofer. 6.47 to play. Ravens 69. Dodge City 60. Kofer hands it off to Jeremiah Kemboy. Kemboy to Kofer. 12 to shoot for the Ravens. Summers and Carroll have not touched the ball on this possession. Now 9 to shoot. Now Janai has it. Janai guarded by Ice Emery. 5 to shoot. Janai tries to break him down. Finds Kemboy. Kemboy going to have to get a shot up. Throws it up and can't get it. Battle for the rebound, Swartz and Smith get tangled up and Swartz pulls it down. Duncan all the way and he's fouled against Kemboy. A lot of people in the building wanted to travel but they say a blocking foul against Kemboy before the walk. So with 6.19 to go, free throws coming for Hunter Duncan. That's the third on Kemboy. Hunter Duncan. A very talented freshman out of Chicago. He's played a good game today. And it looks like really, honestly, what we've seen today at least with the uh, loss of Gavin Shannon, Hunter Duncan has really stepped up as uh, that, next great, that next great conquistador guard. And his free throw is good. Of course... No guard that they have. Even Ice Emery, who's one of the better guards in the conference, uh, no guard compares to what they had last year with Jason Edwards, who was player of the year in the conference. He's now playing at North Texas. And one out of two for Duncan. Rebound taken by Janai. Eight-point lead for the Ravens. We're coming down to six minutes to play. Javen Kofer fouled from behind by Duncan, and now free throws coming for Javen. That was the final foul of the Ravens being in the bonus. Now everything from here on out is two shots. Javen Kofer, the freshman out of San Marcos, Texas. First one on its way, and good. Ravens hit the 70-point mark with 6.11 to go. One more free throw here for Javen Kofer. On its way, and good. Javen goes two out of two at the stripe. And here comes Hunter Duncan in the Conquistadors now down by 10. 71-61. Six minutes to play. Gamble guarded by Carroll. They work it back to Duncan. Duncan spins off of Summers. Plants his feet. Kicks it. Three-point shot is good. Ice Emery from downtown. A much-needed shot for Dodge. And their sophomore guard steps up. 5.45 to go. 71-64. Ravens with the lead and the basketball. Here's Carroll. Carroll to CJ. CJ winds up, sets the feet, got it! Big shot for CJ Smith. And the answer from the Ravens. Dodge City ball, 5.34 to go. Ravens 74, Coffeyville up by 10. 74-64 our score. Duncan, fouled by Kemboy. That's going to be Kemboy's fourth. And free throws coming for Duncan. Duncan has struggled at the line here tonight. I 
as has Dodge City as a whole. That one no good. Another missed free throw for the Conquistadors. Ravens with the basketball now leading by 10. Kofer swings it right to Kemboy. Kemboy playing with four fouls now. They work it to Carroll. Chris, nice move left, kicks to Kofer in the corner. It's good! Javen Kofer from downtown. Back-to-back -back triples for CJ and Javen. And the Ravens up by 13. Gamble thought about it. Passes it up. Step back, jump shot, tough shot. No. Rebound, Kofer. Ravens have momentum. They have the ball up by 13. Carroll pass to Janai. Janai goes up, lays it in. 15-point lead for Coffeyville with 4.40 to play. Their largest lead of the night is matched. Under four and a half to go. That shot no good from Duncan. And a foul there against Boulard. Dodge City running out of time. The Ravens have all sorts of momentum. Free throws coming for CJ. CJ Smith going to the free throw line. It's 79-64, Coffeyville. 4.26 to play. Ravens with a win would move into eighth place in the conference. And we'll see what happens with Northwest Tech a little bit later today. That shot, good by Janai. One more for Summers, who has turned into a scoring menace in the Jayhawk Conference, and he goes two out of two. Ravens have their largest lead of the day. They lead it by 17, approaching four minutes to go. Ice Emery gets to the baseline. Emery tries to hand it off to Swartz. Three for Gamble is good. It rattles home. 81-67, a shot that Dodge needed desperately. Kofer brings it up. We'll have our final media timeout of the night at the next dead ball. Kofer hands off Janai. Janai looking for some space. Now works it back to Javen. 15 to shoot. Javen, full head of steam, turns, gets inside, kicks to Kemboy. Kemboy hands it off to C.J. Smith. C.J. goes up and got the bounce. Dodge City wanted to travel, did not get it. Three and a half to play, Ravens 83, Dodge 67. Ice Emery works it left. Down low, Swartz. 15 to shoot here for Dodge. Emery spinning, hands off Gamble. Gamble might have gotten away with a walk. That shot is off. Summers tips it to Carroll. Coffeyville has momentum. They have a 16-point lead. They will slow it down with 3.06 to play. Carroll has been the best player all night long. He has the basketball. He gets around his defender and lays it in. Chris Carroll, a legacy performance. Emery the drive in contact. 2.48 to go. Ice Emery will be at the free throw line. Ravens 85, Dodge 67. Our final media timeout of the night. Coffeeville up 18. We're back in 60 seconds on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. Bean with Medical Lodges is proud to supply that tender care in Coffeyville. Skilled nursing services, rehabilitation, adult daycare, and much more are all offered. Visit medicallodges.com or stop by 2921 West 1st in Coffeyville and learn more. Medical Lodges Coffeyville, where they serve and enhance the lives of others with caring hands. This is Community State Bank at Work. 
This is Community State Bank at Work in our community. From kids' activities to school programs to funding home and business loans, every day Community State Bank is at work in our neighborhood. Whether you bank at Community State Bank or not, they're working for you every day. Community State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. I'm Mike Avey, and at Community State Bank, we believe in Coffeeville. 85-67, the Ravens in front with 248. Happy you're with us here on this Saturday afternoon. Slowly turning into Saturday evening. Ice Emery will be at the free throw line. As we return from the timeout. Ravens have a, an 18-point lead. Now we'll just need to protect the basketball and Hit some free throws, and they're going to be looking pretty good. In this one, Emery's first free throw gets the bounce. 85-68. One more free throw here for Ice Emery. It's up and good. So 85-69, we'll see the Ravens bring it up. 2.40 to play. Brian Griffith has the basketball, works it right to Javen Kofer. Kofer has it now. And finds Janai Summers. Down to C.J. Smith. C.J. on the baseline, spinning, kicking. Griffith has it. They don't take the shot. Ten to shoot now for the Ravens. They're not in a rush. 2.25 to go. Brian, the drive, the kick. Carroll, it's been his day. He drives, he kicks. Griffith will send it and miss it. Carroll with a rebound, and it's just been that kind of day for Chris Carroll. 2.07 to go. More clock will drain for the Ravens. Kofer. That one, I, I tried to catch it. I almost got it. One hand. We almost got it. Seven seconds here for the Ravens. 2.02 to go. That was a pretty good pass. I'm not going to I should have had that. I should have had that. If I had a second hand, I would have. But Two minutes to play, 85-69. Carroll lost it on the way up. Boulor with the takeaway up ahead to Duncan. Duncan will go up. Blocked by Summers. It will stay with Dodge City, but with a minute 52 to go, Janai says no. Dodge City basketball, 152 to play. Boulard. Carroll knocked it up in the air. It stays with Boulard. He sends the shot, missed it. Rebound, Carroll. Chris in transition, hands off Janai. Could this be the dagger? Yes, it is. Janai Summers from downtown. 88 69, 90 seconds to play. And that one, a foul will be called that will send Gamble to the free throw line. That'll be against CJ Smith. Our scoring game one was 91 72. And uh, we're coming pretty close to maybe replicating that here today. Gamble's first free throw up and good. We'll see Des Marshall and Alvin Cole work their way to the scorer's table. As will Gio Walton. Chris Carroll put together one unbelievable performance. Maybe his best game as a Raven when I don't think anybody in the building expected him to come close to his best game as a Raven. After being sick all week, not practicing, not traveling with the team, Chris Carroll was remarkable. A minute 18 to play. Raven basketball, they lead at 88-71. Gio Walton has the basketball, hands it off to Brian Griffith. Griffith gets a screen from Cole. Now Gio Walton has it. A minute eight to play. Gio the drive. Gio, nice pass to Cole. Cole couldn't control it. We're going to go under a minute to go. Ravens still lead it by 17. Here's Hunter Duncan. Duncan the drive, goes up, and draws the foul, and one. Foul will go against Alvin Cole with 57 seconds to play. Free throw coming here for Hunter, Hunter Duncan, and Duncan's really been an impressive piece. Obviously, when you watch this Dodge City team, there's no question who their top player is. That's Ice Emery. 
But Hunter Duncan, if he comes back for his sophomore year, he's going to be one of the better point guards in this league. This is an impressive young talent. Here's Brian Griffith with the basketball. Ravens burning clock. 40 seconds to go. Brian finds Geo Walton. About 10 seconds to shoot. This could be the final possession of the night for the Ravens. And we'll see Brian dribble it back. Now five seconds to shoot. Brian sends it. Hand in the face. Missed it. Cole on the rebound. Goes up. Missed the shot. Rebound taken by Duncan. Shot clock is off. 20 seconds to play. Now 15 seconds. Duncan works it right. Ice Emery hands it off to Boulard. Boulard to Swartz. Swartz works it left to Duncan. And now down to seven seconds left. Boulard sends the three. It is off the back of the iron. The rebound is taken and laid in by Gamble. But now the Ravens just have to get the ball in play. And that will do it. 88-76. The Ravens defend Nellis Hall. Get a massive victory. And they are back in position to host a postseason game as they head to Hutchinson on Wednesday. Ravens win at 88-76. And, of course, the talk is on the performance of the Ravens and Chris Carroll. What a night for Chris Carroll. Let's step away for five minutes. We'll have final stats. We'll hear from a member of the coaching staff when we come back. Five minutes, Red Raven postgame show. Coming up next on US 98 and the Red Raven Sports, Sports Network. luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local derailed commodity flooring and furniture. Brazelton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin and Butler, Missouri. Got a car? Maybe a motorcycle or even a boat. Do you rent or own your own home? If you have any of these, call Call NDB in Coffeeville and then relax. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies so that they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeeville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. Make your home more comforting with help from Derailed Commodity. Update your flooring with the area's largest selection of in-stock carpet, luxury vinyl plank, tile, area rugs, and more in many styles, brands, and colors. New furniture always brightens a home. We have a great selection of furniture, including sofa sets, recliners, and mattresses. Economy to premium, in stock, and ready to brighten your home. Shop now at your local Derailed Commodity flooring and furniture. Brazelton in Independence, Kansas, and Joplin and Butler, Missouri. Taco Mayo's new filet ole steak bowl is piled high with fillet mignon. It's filet mignon. A heaping bowl loaded with refried beans, Mexicali rice, cheddar jack, sour cream, and tender filet mignon. It's filet mignon. Filet mignon. A uh, filet mignon. Filet mignon. Filet mignon. Savor the juicy filet ole steak bowl stacked with filet mignon and only from Taco Mayo. That's a wrap. No, that's a bowl. Got a car? Maybe a motorcycle or even a boat. Do you rent or own your own home? If you have any of these, call NDB in Coffeeville and then relax. NDB can protect your assets and save you money. They represent numerous insurance companies so that they can help you find the right insurance at the right price for you. NDB at 812 West 11th in Coffeeville. Call Ben Veets at 620-251-1970 and relax. At CRMC Medical Group, our primary care physicians and providers focus on ways to keep you and your family in good health, as well as care for them when they're not. Our family medicine and women's health physicians are accepting new patients. We have convenient office locations in Coffeeville and Independence with extended and Saturday hours in Coffeeville. If you need a physician or need to make an appointment, please call 620-688-6566. That's 620-688-6566. 
When you need to rely on a nursing facility for the care of a loved one, wouldn't it be comforting to know that the owner is providing the care? Owner Stephanie Bean with Medical Lodges is proud to supply that tender care in Coffeeville. Skilled nursing services, rehabilitation, adult daycare, and much more are all offered. Visit medicallodges.com or stop by 2921 West 1st in Coffeeville and learn more. Medical Lodges Coffeeville, where they serve and enhance the lives of others with caring hands. You have a choice on where to go and who you want to be. Here at Coffeyville Community College, you can be you. We can make you workforce ready at one of our technical campuses, be a student athlete, join an honors program or an activity, have a voice with student government, and be involved with student life events. Our school believes in our red and white traditions, providing you with a quality education and preparing you for the next journey in life. Once you experience our campus, you know you've made the right choice. Let us help you Make our story your story and become Raven Proud. This is Community State Bank at Work. This is Community State Bank at Work in our community. From kids' activities to school programs to funding home and business loans, every day Community State Bank is at work in our neighborhood. Whether you bank at Community State Bank or not, they're working for you every day. Community State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. I'm Mike Avey, and at Community State Bank, we believe in Coffeeville. If you could use a little help around the house, Windsor Place at-home care is the perfect solution for you. Their caregivers are prepared to help with laundry, meals, housekeeping, shopping, and more. These helpful services are so reasonably priced, you can afford to pay for them yourself. In many cases, long-term care insurance or other sources provide assistance with the cost. Home is where the help is. Call Windsor Place at Home Care, 800-982-1866. Ravens get an 88-76 win in the nightcap here up Shane Hill, US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. Jake Odom joins us in just a couple minutes. Uh, him and Braden Proctor having a conversation. But we'll talk to one of them here in just a couple minutes. It uh, looks like it'll be Coach Odom. But let's go over final stats really quick. Ravens shoot 44% from the field, 43% from three, 86% at the line. Dodge City 41% from the field, 25% from three, 57% at the line. Leading the way for Dodge City, 20 points for... Ice Emery, 17 for Jamari Gamble, 15 for Hunter Duncan, 10 for Jackson Swartz. For the Ravens, 33 for Chris Carroll, 26 for Janai Summers, 12 for C.J. Smith, 8 for Javen Kofer, 8 for Brian Griffith. Ravens get the win. Ravens win the rebound battle, 48-31. They have 14 team assists. They shoot 86% at the free throw line. Let's take a quick 60-second break. Coach Odom joins us right after this on US 98 and the Red Ravens Sports Network. plank tile area rugs and more in many styles new furniture always brightens a home we have a great selection of furniture including sofa sets recliners and mattresses economy to premium in stock and ready to brighten your home shop now at your local derailed commodity flooring and furniture Brazelton in independence kansas and joplin and butler missouri this is Meat Mountain, and up there on the summit awaits the all-new filet o Steak Bowl from Taco Mayo. A heaping bowl filled with Mexican favorites and literally erupting with filet mignon. The filet o Steak Bowl can be yours if you make it past Chuck Steak Canyon and the deadly sirloin abyss. Filet mignon beckons, my friend, on the meaty, mighty pinnacle of beefdom. The filet o Steak Bowl from Taco Mayo. Welcome to Meat Mountain. Red Ravens in the win column, 88-76, where they win over Dodge City to complete the season sweep of the Conquistadors and move back into the top eight in the conference standings. We're now joined by assistant coach Jake Odom. And coach, it just feels like uh, this was a really nice, complete team win. You shoot well at the free throw line. You win the rebound battle. Uh, you're st- you have your starting five contribute. You knock down 12 threes. You have 14 team assists. It just feels like everything that you need to do to play winning basketball, this team did today. Yeah, and we uh, we stressed all week uh, how important it was 
to win this game and um, a good team win. I mean, up and down the roster, the guys that got in and, and played, they, they all contributed and, um, you know, give credit to them because this was um, as close to a must win as it could be for us. Coach, uh, you know, we I mean, there's no disputing in uh, Red Raven fanhood that uh, Chris Carroll is not a very good basketball player. Mm -hmm. But uh, with him being out for most of the week with an illness and not traveling to Garden, he didn't even practice until Friday. Uh, I mean, 30, 33 points and 18 rebounds, four assists, only one turnover in 35 minutes. This might be the most impressive performance of the year for him. Yeah, he played his tail off tonight. We were a little unsure what we were going to get for him being out all week and being sick. But, um, I mean, that's an incredible uh, performance from Chris. Real real gritty, gutty performance. Um, 14 rebounds second half, 18 total for the game and 33 points. I mean, you can't ask for much more than that. You cannot. Another uh, another player that's really been con a consistent impact player in the second half of the season, Janai Summers, 26-11. Uh, and 11, And with Chris's performance, it almost feels quiet. But another great day for Janai. Yeah, um, hitting six threes. Um, rebounded the ball well tonight. And, um, you know, we got to limit his turnovers a little bit. But, um, yeah, another great one. He's been reliable for us this second semester. And, um we're looking for him to continue to do that. Coach, it feels like we talk about it every single year at this time of the year. But, uh, you know, so so key is these uh, these final games are going to get closer and closer uh, with uh, team seasons uh, becoming on the line every night to shoot at the free throw line. And this team's done such a good job all year long. And you'd see it again tonight. I mean, Dodge City played a pretty solid basketball game. But one of the areas where they struggled, they missed 11 points at the free throw line. Your team, 24 of 28. You'll take that any day of the week. Yeah, um, and again, it was Chris. Chris was getting downhill, getting to the line, being real physical down there, and he goes 11 for 12 from the free throw line. But, um, yeah, we did a good job there. If we can get to the line 28 times and make 24, we'll take that every game. Coach, final thing I have for you, appreciate your time. It always you know, it feels like every single time we talk, we're talking about uh, a young team kind of learning and a young team figuring things out for the first time and a young team uh, going through different experiences for the first time. But it really feels like uh, in a lot of games this year, you've wanted to win, you felt like uh, you had a chance to win, but there really hasn't been a must win on the table until potentially this game where a home playoff game on the docket, you have a chance to get that tiebreaker with Dodge City. Uh, you have to be excited, you and the rest of the coaching staff, with how this team woke up and responded to a must-win scenario. Yeah, with being so uh, so young this year, you know we expected growing pains, but now's the time of the year that we got to start reaping a little bit of the reward from the experience those guys got early on in the year. And um, yeah, just a complete team win. And if we keep doing this, keep getting better every day, and focus on what's in front of us, then um, I think we'll be able to finish the season strong. It's all about who gets hot in March. No doubt. And the Ravens will take on the Hutch Blue Dragons on Wednesday before taking on the Colby Trojans back here at Nellis Hall next week. Coach Jake Odom, good enough to join us. Thanks, Coach. Enjoy the win. Thanks. Absolutely. Big thanks to Nick Bryan back in the studio. Big thanks to Andrew Elrod and his team for helping us. Uh, final score again, 88-76. Ravens get the W. A much-needed W at that. Chris Carroll with a performance for the books. So long from Nellis Hall. Until next time, I'm Shane Neal saying have a great rest of your Saturday. We'll talk to you on Wednesday on US 98. We'll be back at it, of course, on the Red Raven Sports Network on Saturday when the Ravens return home to Nellis Hall. That does it for us. Back to the music on US 98. We'll talk to you next time.